Hello viewers. Today I want to share some updates on my Rex 3100 or Micro Rex 3100, essentially only a ROM difference. And um, I've, in the last video I showed you the machine uh, in detail and from the inside and there were some issues with the power supply, what a surprise. And um, now in the last months I've tried to solve this issue of the power supply and you will see some footage um, recorded on the last months where I've tried different things and um, so this video will be more an electronics video as the power supply videos on my VEX server 4300. So you will see now uh, some different approaches and what I've tried and um, it's essentially only an update because the issue isn't solved 100%. So I have to do some more things to solve it, but um, at the end uh, I've got power from the power supply or from the thing which uh, I put into this machine. But before I will do that, I will check if the machine is working, uh, the, um, if the main world is working. Therefore, I have another power supply here. This is the power supply of my storage extension. And the storage expansion is basically, um, has the same chassis like a Micro X 3100 Model 10. Therefore, this power supply has the uh, connector for the motherboard as well and uh, I can try to run the machine with the with this power supply. So let's turn it on. Turns on and on the back there are some indicators for the self-tests but I have my deck laptop here as well and we can see the procedure and we can see that the machine is Starting. Okay, there are some errors. I have to look up what these errors are. But in general, the machine starts, so we have an output. Then I can repair the original power supply, and after that, I will take care of these errors. Now it's a few days later and I have replaced the capacitors um, from the power supply. You see the two boards of the power supply here. I have to order the capacitors twice because um, I first ordered these capacitors and they are too big. The physical dimensions does not fit so I have to order another ones, these ones, but um, I wasn't able to get them from my usual uh, shop or electronic parts and it was a bit hard to find um, a shop who sells them uh, uh, in small batches because often um, I was only able to order them uh, in a batch of 500 units and I don't need uh, 500 units. I've ordered 20 of them and that's okay. Um, I've also cleaned everything um, on the boards um, because uh, this was very necessary, it was quite a mess. It uh, took a half a day to uh, remove the old capacitors and clean all the boards. The electrolyte of the uh, capacitors were everywhere in, on both boards. And also eight of the nine capacitors uh, um, had leaked. Um, also this uh, PSU has a quite interesting design. Um, here are the uh, connectors to the, com to the computer uh, for the devices and here for the mainboard. And here on the other side is the input, but there is a cable going up to here, to this board, it's connected to here. And um, so there is, this is a second PSU. So we have is this um, um, unit consists of two power supplies. And I thought at the first, at the beginning, Okay, one is 12 volt and one is 5 volt, but that isn't the design. This is a complete 5 volt and 12 volt uh, PSU, and this is a complete 5 volt and 12 volt PSU. Um, I think uh, because this is a bigger OX, the Model 20, um, they've added just a second board as a second power supply for the extra devices. Um, now I will assemble the whole uh, PSU to together and uh, test it. I've uh, cleaned the parts as good as I can. It's not, it's not perfect, 
but it's uh, inside, um, so uh, I don't. Uh, it's not visible after I've built the uh, machine back together. Therefore, it's not necessary that everything is perfectly removed. Uh, it's, I think it's, it's it's okay for my purpose. Now I've assembled the PSU together and it's uh, premiere time, so let's try it out. And uh, in the videos uh, where I talk a kind of English, um, you'll see uh, really the first time, because I have to record it twice for the German video as well, but I can do the first test only, only once, so therefore you'll see what's happened when I turn it on. Um, over there I have a CD drive and um, a hard drive for testing purpose because I don't want to connect it with the motherboard if something went wrong and if these two uh, parts break it's not that much an issue like when the mind motherboard of the VEX uh, the server will break. So. I'll put it in and take a step back. Ah. Looks a bit strange. There's no power and the vents are not spinning quite much and you hear a clickering sound. Let's try it another time. I think something is not working. The power supply of the VEX server 3100 has some serious issues. Um, it takes a long time to start the power supply. You see the um, voltage of the primary side after the electrification on the left and on the right is the oscilloscope and it shows the output of the 5 volt line. And um, you see it takes a while until it starts and after it starts it uh, starts the switching mode and switching mode ends after about 7 milliseconds and then it starts again and every 20 milliseconds the switching starts. And um, this is caused by the um, power line frequency because it's 50 Hz in Europe and uh, I think after 20 milliseconds uh, the rectification, uh, the uh, switching process starts again, but I don't know um, where this issue is uh, located. Um, it could be on the primary side um, in the uh, PWM controller, it could be on the uh, secondary side, something to do with the feedback, but um, I, I don't want to touch the primary side, and therefore um, uh, at the moment I'm not able to fix it with my um, current experience. For that reason, I have here a second power supply and this is a power supply of my storage expansion and um, I thought about it and um, I've also added another um, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, something to my shelf and now I don't have enough high for the uh, VEX server 4000 and the VEX server 3100 and the storage expansion and the terminal on top and therefore uh, I've decided to put the storage expansion in storage and uh, don't use it at the moment. And um, the, um, the layout of the board of the um, storage expansion is the same like the top board of the uh, MicroX 3100. For that reason I will uh, take the board out of this, uh, this case and uh, um, we'll put this board in this case. So I will uh, solder these lines to this board and we'll uh, put this broken board in this case and uh, maybe in the future I will uh, check if I can find the issue with, uh, with that board which will be in there. And it's quite interesting if you look at both boards um, here on this is the PWM controller is a small modification hope you can see it there's a small modification here there are some um, resistors added to the PWM controller and uh, on the other board there are this this, this modification also the optocoupler here is a different manufacturer 
um, and some other parts are uh, has different features. I think this is a newer revision than uh, that one, uh, but it's possible to change it because it is the same board. So, um, interesting here uh, on this board, all the, re the uh, capacitors are also these ones, the brown ones, and um, if you are said this um, the, um, brand isn't uh, SXF, is right, the uh, brand is you know, the Chemicon. So uh, I have to correct the last video at this point. So the next uh, step will be to change the bots, and uh, then I have a working power supply for the VEX server 3100. This lower board here, which is basically a second uh, switching power supply without the rectification of the primary side because it's done here, um, this uh, will stay in the case, but uh, it will be disconnected. So I don't, um, uh, this cable here, which goes to the other board, um, I don't want to put it in on this board. Therefore, this board is, will be out of order, um, but uh, this is not a, will not be a problem because uh, I do not need so much power, so one of these two connectors will be out of order soon, but uh, I will use um, um, two tape drives and a hard drive and that uh, should be worked with one of the power supply boards. So I put the board of the other power supply into that power supply and uh, solder everything together. It took quite a long time because I have to desolder all the cables and uh, solder them back together. And uh, during the process I damaged one of the resistors on one of the boards. So I have to replace the resistor as well. But now it's everything back to better. And before I will put that into the machine, uh, I will check on the oscilloscope if the output of this power supply is correct now. So let's start. And you can see here, it's perfectly 5 volt. We can go a bit, let's zoom in a bit. Where is the scale here? Wrong way. Yeah, it seems perfectly. There's no, there's no issue. It's perfect, perfect output of that power supply. So I can put the power supply back into the machine. Okay, now I've put everything back together and um, I put it in the machine. I have did it twice because the first time I put the power supply in the machine, the machine did not start. The, uh, the board um, has power, uh, had power, but um, the ROM wasn't uh, loaded. And um, then I measured all the pins of the, uh, of the connector to the main board. And there's one pin for the voltage OK. And um, if this pin does not provide power to the board, the machine won't start. Um, and um, after that, I've put the uh, power supply out of the um, case. And because this uh, pin only provides power to the machine when both uh, power supply boards are running and the lower one is out of service. So I have to solder in a bypass from the uh, upper board to the pin directly. And after that, the machine starts or the ROM was loaded from the ROM module, but um, uh, the machine stuck at some tests. Um, I don't, um, at first, I don't really know why that was happened because uh, you can see the status LEDs on the back and uh, they're stuck on, on some, some tests. It's not the same test every time, but it has something to do with the uh, serial controllers. And after that, I uh, um, take my oscilloscope and measured the uh, voltage pins on the oscilloscope and I saw two pins um, with minus 3.3 and minus 12 volt are uh, not providing uh, constant power. So I think there will be uh, an issue with some parts on the power supply. So um, I have to check that as well in the future. Um, but uh, I want to give you an update with this video on that machine. And um, I think in the next video I will try to solve that issue and um, I have had a look on the board because we have seen in the beginning that um, there were some um, some errors appearing um, from the main board and also these errors can be caused by the corrosion from the leaking battery or something like that. I really don't know. So um, I have to solve uh, that issue as well. But um, for now this is the end of that video and I hope you found that interesting and you can leave comments below and thanks for watching.